Right after your solid organ transplant, you were started on anti-rejection medications to keep your immune system from rejecting your new foreign organ. Like other drugs, anti-rejection medications have some side effects and food interactions. For instance, these interactions may cause a rise in potassium, cholesterol, and blood sugar levels, a drop in magnesium levels, weight gain, and a greater risk for a foodborne illness. In order to lower your risk of these possible side effects, please follow the specific diet recommendations and food safety guidelines we give you to keep yourself safe and well after your transplant. Your registered dietitian will visit you while you're in the hospital to give you handouts with the following diet and food safety information and answer any questions you may have about your post-transplant diet. Your dietitian will also give you their contact information and encourage follow-up questions as they come up after you're discharged. If you have cystic fibrosis, you have special nutrition needs after your transplant. Your dietitian will meet with you to discuss your nutrition plan. You will need to follow a high calorie, high fat, high salt diet. You will also need to follow food safety guidelines as your body will be at greater risk for foodborne illness after your transplant. Food safety is important for all transplant patients. Your immune system is weaker after your transplant because of the immunosuppressive medications you are taking. In fact, your immune system will always be weaker, which makes it more likely that you can get infections. So it's important to make food safety a lifelong commitment. Many bacteria and viruses or pathogens can cause a foodborne illness. Common pathogens include Listeria, E. coli, Salmonella, and norovirus, among others. Your dietitian will give you a food safety booklet before your discharge from the hospital. Please refer to the booklet for detailed information on food safety guidelines. There are four important steps to keep in mind when preparing or handling food. Clean, separate, cook, and chill. Make sure your hands, cooking surfaces, and utensils are cleaned often. Wash your hands in warm, soapy water for 20 seconds before and after handling food, using the restroom, changing a diaper, and or handling pets. Wash utensils, cutting boards, and countertops with hot, soapy water. Bacteria can spread from one food to another. This is known as cross-contamination. To prevent cross-contamination, be sure to keep ready-to-eat foods away from raw foods. Keep raw meat, poultry, seafood, and eggs separate from cooked or ready-to-eat foods. Do not place cooked food on a plate that was previously used for raw meat, poultry, fish, or eggs, unless the plate has been thoroughly cleaned. Do not reuse marinades that contain raw meat, poultry, or seafood juice on ready-to-eat foods unless the marinade has been brought to a boil first. Use a separate cutting board for raw food. Cook foods to safe temperatures. Bring sauce, soup, and gravies to a boil when reheating. Heat leftovers to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Reheat hot dogs, lunch meat, and other deli meats until they are steaming or 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a food thermometer to make sure all proteins are cooked to their safe minimum internal temperatures. Please see your food safety booklet for details. If you do not want to use a food thermometer, all of your proteins should be cooked until well done. Make sure to chill food right away to slow the growth of bacteria. Keep the refrigerator temperature at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Refrigerate perishable foods, which can spoil quickly within two hours of cooking or buying. Do not thaw foods at room temperature. It is safest to thaw foods in the refrigerator. You can also thaw foods in cold, running water, or in the microwave, but only if you cook the food immediately after it has thawed. Fresh fruits, vegetables, and herbs should be washed thoroughly. Use two parts water and one part lemon juice or vinegar as a cleaning solution. Let the solution sit on the fruit or vegetable for one minute, then rinse with water. Be sure to wash all produce before eating, cutting, or peeling. 
Make sure that all dairy products, fruit juices, and honey are pasteurized. This means the product has been treated to reduce harmful bacteria. Avoid food that is open to the public. Salad bars and buffets are risky dining options as many people have access to the food. It's also possible that foods may have been kept at unsafe temperatures, which can cause harmful bacteria growth. When dining out, it's safer to order a hot entree that is prepared in the kitchen. Avoid free samples at the grocery store and food courts unless they are individually wrapped and stored at safe temperatures. If you have well water, be sure to have it tested every year to make sure it's safe to use. City water, filtered or bottled water, is safe. Wipe the tops of all cans and bottles with the vinegar or lemon juice and water solution before opening as they may have gotten dirty in storage. Check the expiration dates on your goods. Throw out all moldy and or outdated products. The best buy date is the grocery store sign of freshness. You have about three to four days after the best buy date to consume the goods. The use by date is the actual expiration date. All goods need to be consumed before or by this date. Leftovers should be kept in the refrigerator for no more than three to four days. A good rule to follow is when in doubt, throw it out. Never taste test something if you're not sure if it's still good. Stay up to date on local food recalls through the local news, radio, and newspaper or by visiting foodsafety.gov. The anti-rejection medications that you started taking after your transplant may cause side effects. Some of these side effects can increase your risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Because of this, it's recommended that you limit your intake of salt to less than 2,000 milligrams per day. Keep in mind that table salt has more than 2,000 milligrams per teaspoon, so it should be used sparingly. Food naturally contains salt, so try to limit added salts whenever possible. You can do this by familiarizing yourself with nutrition labels. Choose items that say low sodium, no added salt, or heart healthy. Aim for items that are no more than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving. When you are eating three meals a day, try to have meals that contain less than 500 milligrams of sodium each, and snacks that have less than 250 milligrams of sodium. Flavor foods with no salt added herbs lemon and lime juice, garlic, onions, and seasoning powders, and spices. Choose the low salt, low fat versions of the following items as often as possible, such as salad dressings, soups and broths, mustards, ketchups, sauces, fresh and frozen meats, canned meats and beans, fresh and frozen vegetables, low salt soft cheeses like Swiss, goat, ricotta, fresh mozzarella, or cream cheese, low salt breads, cereals, pasta, rice, crackers, granola, and corn tortillas, unsalted nuts, low salt potato chips, pretzels, popcorn, and snacks, sherbet, sorbet, Italian ice, popsicles, fresh or frozen canned or dried fruits without added salt. Avoid the following items whenever possible. Salt, salt substitutes, herbs and spices with added salt, high sodium condiments such as soy sauce, olives, relish, bacon bits, and croutons, salted stocks, broths, bouillon cubes, canned soups, instant cereal, puddings, and gravies, pre-marinated or seasoned meats and vegetables, including processed and infused meats, for example, chicken in a 15% solution, processed or hard cheeses and spreads, cottage cheese, buttermilk, unless they are low salt, canned vegetables and beans that are not low salt, unless you choose the no added salt or low sodium versions, or rinse the canned vegetables under water and drain in a colander. Another way to lower your risk of heart disease that can be caused by your anti-rejection medications is to avoid saturated fats and trans fats. To do that, choose more of the following foods. Lean, baked, 
broiled, grilled meats and low-salt, low-fat lunch meats. Low-fat, fat-free milk and milk products, including yogurt, cheese, and condiments. Fresh, frozen, dried, or canned fruits and vegetables in water or 100% of their own juice, 100% fruit juices, and grains prepared without added fat. Unsaturated vegetable oils and spreads such as canola, olive, peanut, corn, safflower, sesame, soybean, sunflower, soft liquid margarine, low-fat mayonnaise, and salad dressings. Low-salt nuts such as almonds, walnuts, peanuts, pecans, pistachios, and hazelnuts. Try to limit these to one ounce at a time. Avoid the following foods. Meats with more than three grams of fat per ounce, such as duck, goose, bacon, sausage, deli meats, veal, lamb, pepperoni, salami, bologna, hot dogs, ribs, organ meats, and fried meats. Whole milk and cheese, cream, half and half, most non-dairy creamers, ice cream, and whipped cream. Full fat cream cheese, sour cream, and yogurt. Fruits and vegetables prepared in butter, cream sauce, or fried. Coconut, most baked goods, granola, and snack crackers. Starches prepared with cream, butter, or cheese sauces. Butter, lard, beef tallow, bacon fat, stick margarine, or regular mayonnaise. Palm, palm kernel, coconut oil, and hydrogenated oils. Macadamia nuts, Brazil nuts, and cashews. After your transplant, you were probably started on the steroid prednisone as one of your anti-rejection medications. Prednisone can cause a rise in your blood sugar. If you have diabetes, this will probably make it even more difficult to control your blood sugar levels. If you're not diabetic, but your blood sugar levels become higher for a long period of time, it could lead to diabetes. Because of this, we suggest limiting your intake of added sugar to help better control your blood sugars. You can do so by avoiding items such as desserts, syrups, honey, and sugar-sweetened beverages. Please refer to the diet handouts you will be provided during your transplant hospitalization for a more complete listing. Potassium is a mineral found in many foods. Some of the medications you take after your transplant can cause a rise in the potassium levels in your blood. These medications include cyclosporine, or Nerol, and tacrolimus, or Prograf. The transplant team will keep track of the level of potassium in your blood. You may need to cut back on high potassium foods if these levels become too high, but you should only do so if your doctor, nurse practitioner, or physician assistant tells you to. If you're instructed to limit your potassium intake, you should aim to consume about 2,000 milligrams per day unless the medical team tells you otherwise. Foods that are highest in potassium should be limited to either no more than one or two servings per day. Please refer to the diet handouts you will be provided during your transplant hospitalization for a more complete listing. Avoid salt substitutes because they are often very high in potassium. Meat can also be high in potassium. However, you should not avoid meat during your recovery as your body needs adequate protein to recover from surgery. Magnesium is another important mineral that every organ in your body needs, especially your heart and kidneys. Magnesium is also important for your muscles and contributes to the makeup of your teeth and bones. After an organ transplant, low magnesium levels are common. Your doctor may recommend that you take magnesium supplements, since food sources are not effective in correcting low levels of this mineral. To recap, focus on these points after your transplant. Follow food safety guidelines for the rest of your life. Aim for healthy eating that limits salt, 
saturated fats, and added sugar. Please note, this does not apply to cystic fibrosis transplant patients. Watch your intake of high potassium foods if your transplant team advises this. Remember, your registered dietitian will visit you while you're in the hospital after your transplant and provide you with food safety and diet handouts to take home. If you have any other questions during your stay about your post-transplant diet, please ask to speak with your registered dietitian. Thank you for choosing Cleveland Clinic for your care.